Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Tonight, tonight's devotion is by Pamela Towson Howard. <coughs> got a goat in the room tonight. I got him chained to the camera uh, tripod. <coughs> Just try to ignore him. Go eat some grass. All right. <laughs> the Bible verse she picked out to go with her devotion tonight is Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. All right. Yes. Amen. So now what we did, um, what, Luke 8 yesterday? Yeah, Luke 8. So now we're, today we're going to do Luke 2. So I will go to the Bible and read Luke 2 for us, and then we'll come back to the devotion. Okay, in Luke 2, we'll be talking about the birth of Jesus the shepherds and the angels, Jesus presented at the temple, the boy Jesus at the temple. All right. Must be a good one to read for Christmas time. Might do that. Okay. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And that wasn't Joseph's baby, that was God's baby. Mary was a virgin, and her and Joseph weren't married. She was a virgin, and God chose her to bring Jesus into the world. So the Holy Spirit came upon her and made her pregnant. And Joseph, you know, Joseph thought, you know, she had to suck with another man because she's pregnant. But an angel appeared to him in a dream and told him, told him, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because, you know, Jesus is in her. The Son of God's in her, pretty much. And so he took Mary and married her, and they didn't sleep together until after the after Jesus was born. God said not to. Okay. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people, for all people. They choose to. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. 
So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Yep. God said, when, when she gives, she's going to give birth to a son, and she's to call his name Jesus. His name will be above all names. So at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and acknowledge God. And that will happen. That will happen. See, the, uh, the Jewish, um, in Jewish tradition, the, the male children, the male babies were circumcised on the eighth day, when they were eight days old. Usually our children, us Gentiles, or even maybe some Jewish people now that live over here, whatever, that have, um, well, just like my nephews, let's just say that, they were, in Sherm, they were born in a hospital, and they were circumcised before they got to come home, which was the same day or a day or two later, so... Just, you know, there's like a big difference. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon. Listen to this. His name was Simeon. He was an old man who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Samuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at the very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. That's why Jesus is called the Nazarene. He grew up in Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. 
He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now listen to this. Jesus kind of gets in trouble. Kind of gets in trouble as a child with this one. But Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, when Jesus was 12, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. Where do you think they found him? Do you think they found him there in Jerusalem? After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in the favor with God and men. Yep. Jesus was in the, in the uh, temple. He was doing his father's business, 12 years old. He was there with the uh, older people teaching the law. And they were amazed at what he was saying. Okay, but he was obedient and didn't uh, take off from his parents again and stay behind because it, you know, worried them and he had to mind. Okay, so now let's me read the devotion by Pamela. Okay, she says, at a local library, I used to run into a sweet young woman who is clearly gifted in ministry. I've heard her conversations with others and can attest to how good she is at encouraging people with the word. As I got to know her better, I saw that her life seemed very unstable. Some people can help others and make them feel wonderful and change their lives. And people think, well, they must have, you know, their life together to know all this and do this stuff for others, be able to do this stuff for others, but their lives, but their own lives could be falling apart. You know, their life alone could be horrible. You just don't know. You just don't know what goes on behind closed doors. She was estranged from her husband, had young children in foster care, and barely knew where she would lay her head each night. Oh, that's sad. But still, she was going, helping people with the Word of God. See? When I suggested she focus on improving her living situation and perhaps get under the covering of her pastors, she balked and said, We are all ministers. I blessed her with a gift and wished her well. But today's scripture verse shows us that even Jesus had to spend time growing strong and gaining wisdom before he launched into his ministries. Let's see. This, this applies to stepping out into any adventure, whether it's a missions trip or a new career. When my mom and I applied for a loan to start a catering business, we couldn't just walk into a bank with our great idea. We had to show a good track record 
and provide a detailed business plan. Moses had his 40-year prep time in the Midian desert before his heart was ready to receive the call. Acts 7 verses 29 and 30. And a little known fact about the Apostle Paul is that he spent three years in Arabia after his conversion before joining the disciples in ministry. Galatians 1, 17 and 18. Look how successful they were, two of the greatest Christians in history. Think of that, Moses and Paul. Two of the greatest Christians in history. If Jesus, Moses, and Paul had to prepare for success, I do too. It just doesn't come like that, you know. Sometimes you have to help yourself or allow someone to help you so you can help others. But uh, it's like you never know what somebody's going through. Just because they look like they have, have a lot and they're helping someone, their life could be miserable. I mean, look at this woman. She was there helping people all the time doing good, the librarian said, helping them a lot. She heard her talking to people, you know, changing their lives with God. And her, she was um, estranged from her husband. She barely had anywhere to live and her kids were in foster care. Her life was falling apart at the time. But she didn't let that stop her from spreading the word of God, from spreading the good news. Amen. Okay, and your homework is begin writing down steps to accomplish each day to move toward your goals or vision. Resist rushing ahead of the plan. So begin writing down steps to accomplish each day to move toward your goal or vision. So think of a vision or a goal that you want to do, whether it's to lose weight or, I don't know, get a new job, get a car, whatever, and resist rushing ahead of the plan. Take one day at a time and just do little steps at a time. You don't want to try to do it all at once. It'll get overwhelming or then you, it won't happen and you'll be really discouraged and just want to quit. Just go one step at a time and don't get discouraged if something happens and you have a bad few days. Just keep going. Pray and keep going. That's just the devil trying to stop you in your tracks. Let him know he's not going to stop you. Like this woman here did not stop when the devil took away her husband, took away her children, and pretty much took away her house and made her homeless. But she still wouldn't let the devil stop her. She still was with God and I'm sure made him very very proud Sherman can you check the time for me please uh, alright so that is our devotion if we got time here I'm going to do some more, more stuff and I hope we do because let's see 18. 18 let me do the circle of kindness first and then I'll try to have time to do the animal devotion ok there's only three today the first one is by Jan King from Tennessee. She's pretty. She took time to make me feel special. I had an appointment at a doctor's office recently where masks are still required. They are here too. 19. The, they are here at the hospitals and doctor too. I was wearing a navy blue shirt with red and white stars. Pretty. I had a solid gray mask. And I was checking in. I noticed the receptionist was wearing a red, white, and blue mask with stars all over it. I jokingly said that I needed a mask like hers. She smiled and immediately reached into a bag and gave me a mask that matched my shirt. Even though she was busy, she took the time to make me feel special. She made my day. wonder why she had those extra masks. You never know to give to people that need one. And she got the perfect mask. Mask. She got the perfect mask. See, just the little things make someone so happy. They could be having a bad day, and you could do something just as simple as that, or have a nice little conversation with them. 
you know, so they know you they know that you care. It's always nice to know someone, you know, cares about you. And changed her whole day around, made her so happy. Okay, and Donna from New Jersey. It helped give me a sense of peace. A few years back, I had to have a stent put in my heart. A few days before the procedure, I was going to run some errands and found a beautiful handmade crystal angel hanging on my front doorknob. Oh my gosh. My neighbor had given it to me as a surprise. At that moment, I felt such a sense of relief that everything would be okay. Everything did go smoothly. To this day, my angel hangs on my rear view mirror. Every time I see my neighbor, I let her know how grateful I am for her thoughtfulness. That's very sweet. See? This hanging an angel, a little ornament on somebody's doorknob to be like, hey, I'm praying for you and here's a little angel to watch over you when you have your procedure. She knows somebody actually cares about her and will be thinking about her and praying for her and thought to give her that little angel. That's very sweet. That's very, very nice. Okay, and the last one is by Talon. Wow, I never really heard that name. Talon from uh, Canada. I was so happy to make her smile. I had just finished showering after working out of the gym. In one of the changing rooms, I found three gold rings left on the bench. They looked old and of sentimental value. No one else was there and the receptionist desk had closed for the evening. So I left a note on the lost and found bulletin board with my phone number. A few days later, I received a call from a young girl who said the rings had been her grandmother's and had great sentimental value. She was so grateful to get them back. I was very happy to put a smile on someone's face. Amen. And some people just would have took them and kept them or took them and pawned them, but she didn't. She took them and put a note on the board and the girl that owned them bought them back. And they were very sentimental to her. They were her grandmas. And I'm not saying, oh, she should have been more careful, you might think. Well, hey, sometimes that happens. I just lost my, uh, I just lost my two rings right here the other day. And I didn't think I'd ever find them. But I did. And I think uh, God put them where I could find them because they were on this stand right here right beside me where we had searched and they weren't there but then like uh what a week later they were there so i got my rings back so you know such things just happen like that sometimes do i got time to do the animal devotion sure uh, check they i ain't got to do one in a few days Hopefully we've got time to do one, guys. Is it 22? 23. Okay, can you watch me? Okay, this one is by Kathy Mayfield. And let's see. The Bible verse is Genesis 1, 21. So God created great... 24. Okay. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abound according to their kind of every winged bird, according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. Everybody pick your animal. This is going to give it away by the title, so pick it. Pick it fast. Pig. Okay, if you guys need time, pause the video. So I'm running out of time here. Vulture Ballet. Vultures. Yuck. Take me home, country roads. I spent most of my life in country settings. Backwoods and the snow plows never heard of, yeah. A creek rippling outside the back door. Grateful deer crossing our road and vultures. 
In real life, vultures do not look or act like the cute creatures in cartoons. No, they don't. To me, they look scary and just plain ugly. And being dive-bombed by one attempting to divert me from walking near the recent roadkill showed me their mean streak. For more than 50 years, I considered them repulsive, only useful for ridding the roads of carnage. One morning, I watched the day come alive from the deck of our daughter's home. I noticed some large black birds opening and closing their huge wings in a tree at the far end of the field. Grabbing binoculars, I had a close-up view of more than 25 vultures sunning themselves in the morning rays. This kittle of vultures, their wings extended to the sun's warmth, excluded grace and beauty. We've seen them like that. It'd be a good Halloween picture. We've seen them like that. Another morning at a different daughter's house, sat outside again viewing the dawn's awakening. A trio of vultures floated on the air currents, the sun glistening off their black wings as they dipped and twirled through the sky. They seemed to dance as though entranced by the new day. Once more I had a glimpse of the splendor with which God filled even these repulsive, ugly creatures. Beauty in this case had not been in the eye of this beholder. It took God's gentle reminders that he made all things beautiful even vultures. May I view all creation, animals, and people as he does, beautiful, beloved, and blessed. O oh Lord, your creatures, small and grand, fill life with beauty from your hand. C.M. There's Kathy Mayfield. All right, guys, so we better stop there, because what's the time, babe? 27. 27. I mean, the camera stops at 30. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless.